what an absolutely gorgeous day to be uh, lost following your doggo. Not exactly lost, in the rough area where I grew up, the estate where I grew up. But um, I don't think, I'm just following the dog, but I don't really think he knows where he wants to go. <laughs> Any ideas, buddy? But this ain't where he wants to go. Uh, Doggle, are we, um, <clears throat> are we gonna make a decision or are we just gonna stand here and look like we're casing people's houses? If I'm right, mate, you, you've gone the wrong way. Well, you have gone the wrong way because this, this ain't anywhere we'd normally take it. <laughs> See, two places potentially he's looking to go. Uh, either the park, which is Broadwaters, not this way, or he wants to go to his nanny house, my mum's house. Not quite in this direction. <laughs> you know, buddy, sometimes I wish I really wish I could hear the little voice in your head. You know, just understand the thought process. What is, his, what is he thinking about? What is it he actually wants to do? You know, I'd love to just, I'd love to see it. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. What's the groove? Because right now, I don't think he has a clue. <laughs> If, uh, if, if we ever get back, I'll, I'll tell him a bit, if we ever get back, <laughs> I'll let you know. If not, this might be one of those, like, traumatic, yeah, uh, oh no, I'm stuck on a desert island, day 53. <laughs> I've just had to eat my own shoes. Well, uh... He, uh, he, 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 he got us to the, the desert island. It's actually a pretty nice island, to be fair. <laughs> <clears throat> nah, uh, <laughs> bless, I really do wish I could figure out what was going on in Wee Doggo's head because he has been all over the place recently. We did kind of figure out where he wanted to go. And like I say, it was a gorgeous morning to get lost, right? Uh, we ended up going to my mum's house. He kind of, you know, got the scent of kind of where he wanted to go. We took a long old route to get to my folks' place. But I don't think he ended up where he thought he was gonna end up. So sometimes he goes to my mum's house and then he gets into my mum's car and then we go to the park. That didn't happen. But trying to figure out his groove, I think I've got an idea. It might be that our neighbours have gotten a wee doggo recently. I've heard them, I guess, them playing with the dog, calling to the dog raising their voices to the dog, like not like, screaming at or anything, but like when they do, he seems to actively move from one room to the, to the next, like as if he's trying to not hear it, as if it's making him nervous, but I don't know. I don't know, like I said, I don't, I don't know what's going on in the little guy's head, but it's, uh, it's unfortunate, really, to see him so nervous. He's been really clingy, really clingy. Which is, it's fine, it's fine. I like, uh, I like giving my dog out huggles. Right, I've been bitten by the VR bug again. Yeah, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Must be that time of year. We did the phasmophobia Halloween thing yesterday and wasn't ideal. It's a game we'd already played. We'd had high hopes for it in VR and it didn't live up. I mean, I'm sure we played it about 
two years ago. We played it in the, the standalone mode, desktop mode. And it played not great then. It's just an assumption that if we played it in VR, we'd have better control. And it just doesn't hold up. I, just, I don't understand what they've done over the last two years to make it any... They've changed models. There's models. Some of the environments have changed a bit, but it's not better. <laughs> and I mentioned... I mentioned when we were doing the little video... So, like, you do know there's, like, better stuff than this in VR chat. Like, if you want to play something none of us have done before um, and actually had a proper experience, like, as in a, a fresh experience, there's, like, there's just dedicated horror maps, worlds, full stories in VR chat. Why don't we do one of those? And so, today, after I got back from the desert island, the, the Trundle... Uh, I threw a message into the group Discord that we had, and I was I was hoping that Zebra and Ram would kind of just go, "Hey, yo, yeah, let's do the thing." Like later on today, I said, "Look, here's a map in VR chat. Let's do it." And it was the Devour, and I don't have any footage of it, sadly, but um, we ended up jumping into that. We, me and Zebra, I couldn't get uh, I couldn't get anything out of uh, out of Ram, and. Uh, so me and Zaber basically kind of just decked around this VR chat map. And I I think Zaber was quite impressed. I wasn't particularly impressed with Phasmophobia. I never have been. Never have been. I don't really think Zaber's all that keen on it either. But Devourin was pretty neat. And I, I think it may have actually sold Zaber on parts of VR chat because VR chat just isn't some goofy empty spaces, nothing to do kind of thing. There are, there's, there are actual experiences in that game. There's loads of um, like escape rooms and things like that in it, so it's, it's, it's worth trying. But it, it's, a, it's a neat little horror map that I've wanted to try for a while, but I've never really been able to get anyone into it. And I've, I don't really like pugging that kind of thing, like randos. So it was, it was neat. And Zabe's not really into horror stuff anyway, but... The idea is that you go out on this road trip, you start in like a petrol station and you, you walk towards your car and you get a text message from your mate and then you all get in the car and then the map starts and you, you know, you're driving down this road and you've almost hit this thing and you get involved in a car accident and you wake up in this mansion and then I guess the idea is just to escape the mansion and it was, it was fun, goofy, broken in places but it was, it was fun, we didn't finish it because we wanted to play it with, we want to play it with Ram but um, <clears throat> the the VR bug has bitten me again, but I haven't been feeling well of late, and I'm actually surprised it hasn't irritated um, my my hands and all that as much as I as I thought it would. I, I was quite worried. I haven't been in VR for so long, and I've missed it so much, but. For somewhat minor and annoying health reasons, I've tried to stay um, out of VR. It's just basically the way that it irritates my skin. It's not that hardcore. It's nothing to do with the... Um, the there was a, the, a recall on the Quest original um, face covering. But uh, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with that because I don't use one. I use a, like a pleather uh, dealio on my Vive, thanks to Shade. And uh, the same kind of groove on my Quest 2. Just where well, it kind of irritates the face. Um, I don't really want to start kind of, you know, because <clears throat> I've, I've ended up uh, I ended up getting some bad infections, and I've just not wanted to to uh, spread that around because that can get really sore, <laughs> really sore, and it's a right ball ache to look after. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's been a bit out of it, but it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't irritated too badly, so that's all right. That's all right. It's not. It's not too bad. I mean, the, I've only just come out of VR, and I, I don't have the raccoon face as badly as I used to. But then I suppose I used to sit in there for like four hours of pops. <laughs> 
But VR is, it is fun when you can get like when you can get people together, and that it is it is pretty fun. And it's, it's some, there are some unique experiences to be had. It's just sad that all of them are in VR chat. <laughs> Speaking of not feeling particularly well, I mentioned yesterday about hurting my hand, and thankfully the colour is it's kind of coming back in, into my fingers and that. But I've been I've had this weird issue. I won't go a huge amount into it, but just. My entire, I start to lose the feeling in just this finger. And my hands, are, I can be a, a bit numb from time to time. Uh, I've got the nervous system of an old man. And oh, it was awkward to have like, I don't know, the easiest way, it wasn't like completely numb. I'm used to like pretty dead feeling wise. I can feel right now. Uh, but it was like, um, how do you explain it? Like, like, maybe if you've been kind of sat on your feet all day or like sat on sat on your legs or something like that and you're not quite the tingly feeling but like there was just it was nothing there it was a completely dulled sense but weirdly over the rest of the day that started to happen to the rest of me as i say i've, I've had uh, i've had feeling issues in the past but this was really weird to go through i just i couldn't settle it felt like my all of my skin was on fire. It was just like like someone was poking needles into my skin. It was like it was neither hot nor cold. You couldn't really. And it was just not pleasant. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm miserable. Gonna gonna keep an eye on that one. That and the strange old lump in the throat and the headaches and the dizziness and the constant tired and the, the just the loss of appetite. Not fun. Not really fun, but eh, eh, still alive. <laughs> I was so tired. It's weird. It's been, it's, a, it's been a really annoying thing. The whole health thing has been a really annoying thing since COVID. You know, my entire family got COVID just as lockdown ended, and we're a, a, an immune compromised family. But oh my god, I, was, I just remember talking to to one of my mates. He's like, "Yeah, I, 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 it took me over a year to recover." If I'm going to have to feel like this for a year, so I'll be like another six months or so. Fuck off. This is annoying as all hell. <laughs> but I'm going to wrap up the note. I'm going to wrap up the note. I just realised something though, right? If a video ever comes out from me and the quality is absolute bollocks, like JPEG quality bollocks... I've probably not clicked some things when I've hit the render button, right? Because I rendered yesterday's vlog. I'm not talking quality like the shite that I'm talking now. This is just rubbish, put it in the bin, right? But I mean the actual visual aspect of it, which again is largely crap, but if it looks like there's like blockiness and artifacting and all that kind of stuff and it's absolutely terrible, like a JPEG, like a really old like, Early, early, like late nineties, early two thousands JPEG, like six forty by four eighty, blown up to a four K screen kind of thing. If it looks like ah, like that, um, I, yeah, I, I've probably misclicked some stuff. But I was using the H.265 um, uh, encoder. I can't remember what the actual HEVC NVNC. I can't remember what it is. The the H.265 is one up from H.264, and the idea is that it will give you the roughly the same results at half the file sizes, right? And I use a, a lot of storage on my machines and that's just, I was like, I'm gonna save some space again. Let's go back to H.265, I've done it before. But I rendered the vlog and yesterday's vlog and it took not a huge amount of time, like nine minutes. I was like, okay, that's cool, it's nine minutes, just using the auto, auto presets on it, 1080p. And as I uploaded it, it was like, Dum, 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 done. And I was like, what? These are usually like between a gig and a half and four gigs, even in, even on this file size. What's, what's going on here? And I, I click it. 76.4 megs. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive what it did for 76.4 megs, but 76.4 megs for a 15 minute 1080p video. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of data being thrown away there, like a JPEG. That's this bit and this bit, and we'll guess them at the other bitch. 
it's this bit, and it's this bit, and we'll gas them at the other bits, and then just, ugh. Is that how a JPEG works? Is it too... I can't remember the actual compression um, set for JPEG, but there's one and one, and then estimate the other one, or it's one, two, three, and estimate the last one. But it's 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 compressed. It's throwing away a percentage of data, and uh, the, the, the preset for H.265 was... Um, Oh, that was aggressive because I re-rendered it and it came out at uh, one point. What was it? One point. One point five gigs. So that's quite a difference. In some areas, visually, it's not a huge difference. But there's there's some areas where I'll just go, oh yeah, this is a dark area. In 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 darker areas, compression is going to become more obvious. It will just throw shit away, and you will just end up with all these like blocky, fuzzy, haloey messes. Again. For 70 odd megs, impressive, but still, oh my God. <laughs> so, majorly fast uploads, but yeah, surprise. But I'm gonna head off. I'm gonna try and get some kip. I'm in my house wearing a cold store jacket. It's not cold, it's not hot. As I say, I'm not feeling great. Ugh. Funny enough, though, my mate the water and he just gone and got COVID. So, is this the first time he's got it, or the second time he's got it? I think it's the first time he's got it. Good luck, mate. It's not too bad. It's, if you if you're proper vaccinated, and that's just like a cold, like a really not nice cold. It's the aftermath that pisses you off because it doesn't go away. <laughs> At least it hasn't for me. I'm one of the unlucky ones. But I hope you're well, and I'll see you all with a bit of luck in the next one.